All right, so let's get into building some actual uh, presets, some actual phaser presets with this information and with this toolkit. So let's say I grab my tornado cells. I'm gonna we're gonna make a, a random shimmering effect. So do a, a ramp down 50%. We can see our waveform over here. I'm gonna give them a phase of 360 and a shuffle. And these are just matrix objects. And I'm going to store with their matrix information universal. And just to show you what this macro is, store universal. Again, we're trying to keep all of our information as universal so that it can be reused by any fixture. And we want a matrix enabled. So that's what this slash a matrix yes is for. Um, in my user profile, I keep a matrix disabled by default. because so I'm storing a color preset. If I'm storing a position preset, if I'm storing anything that's not a phaser, I generally don't want to have a matrix in it. Um, but when I'm storing a phaser, I very much do want to have a matrix in it. If you don't turn this on, you will end up with selective information forced into your preset. So I'm going to hit store a matrix universal into a new preset. Now, sometimes when you do this, you'll see an S pop up anyways. This will generally happen when you, um, for example, if we go to the second step and we tweak our transition and let's say we, oh, I don't know, change our deceleration into that as well. If I store a new preset out of that, you'll get this selective, click it, store a matrix universal, overwrite it. It's cleared away. It, it has something to do with with the the phaser step information I haven't figured out the details all I know is every time I'm storing one of these my my button click process you know after we've you know done our matrix gone tweaked our transition whatever it's store matrix universal look for the s immediately just duplicate that action clear it out we're good to go if you still see the s after that and you're not using selective presets just stop, rebuild your phaser. Some selective information got in somehow and you're not going to be able to get it out. So uh, let's call this our shimmer effect. Uh, and now I'm going to reuse this across multiple fixtures. So I'm going to uh, say phaser to recipe, multi-line. And then I want to apply this to my Lyra's and my Mac 1 beams as well. So I'm just going to go in new recipe line we are automatically referenced to that first line so I just have to go in and add my group actually usually I would have another screen open so it's just a sign from that group tap on an empty line and you're already up and going I could say what was what's my layer group yeah so I could type in sign group four tap this line and you see that pops up automatically so all of this is populated and now when I'm ready to use my phaser. I just double click it and we have a fully populated uh, random ramp down phaser going. But now I want to update it. Uh, I, I don't like that I had a straight down. I want to have more of a spike down. So I'm going to extract this thing into its own preset. So I'm going to say phaser extract this preset and I'm going to tap an empty space. Uh, an appearance is applied to it automatically just to help it stand out uh, as well as whatever you've configured to be the prefix on the name. Um, so I want to update this form so I'm going to hit call as recipe template on this preset. So what's going to happen here is that it's going to copy every recipe line from this preset into your uh, recipe editor and then it's going to say if programmer so anything that's in the programmer will get sucked into your selection um, this is good for situations where you are updating a single base preset that's what I'm calling the thing that that's living in here this is the base preset this is the recipe preset um, if you're updating a single base re single base preset this is great um, I can go in, I can, again, modify my transition, can change my 
deceleration value, acceleration value, whatever, change the, the measure on it, uh, and hit update, and clear out. And now when I double tap this, all of those changes have been applied. If you are trying to tweak just one fixture type though, it can get hairy. So I'm going to copy that over. So I'm going to extract this one and I'm going to show you what I mean. So I've also got this macro for call single line. What this does, and this is also plugin operated, um, I hit that and I tap the recipe preset. And it looks in that preset for anything that is referencing another value elsewhere, meaning anything that, that uh, is referencing one of these, essentially. And it gives me a list and lets me select which one I want to be editing. So if I select the Mac 1 Beams, it uses the information from the Mac 1 Beams line uh, and just grabs that group, puts it at that preset. In this situation, we are not using the recipe editor which means uh, we actually get our a matrix pulled in as well. When we did the call as recipe template, we did not get that. So we would have to update the form first to uh, see that we, uh, well, sorry, make tweaks on that based on the a matrix that we already have, store that, and then come back to tweak the a matrix separately. This approach lets us tweak a matrix and waveform at the same time. However, I only have one uh, fixture type grabbed right now. And as we were discussing in the preset scope video, um, universal doesn't mean just universal. It means gl global and potentially multiple options of global information with universal reusability, which means that if I tweak this, I know that might just sound like jumbled garbage to a lot of people, but if I tweak, oops, wrong portion, if I tweak that to be 100% transition width, and let's say I, I believe if I update it, I'm okay. We're about to test that, so actually, let's find out. I'm gonna make a copy of this just to be safe, and I'm gonna say update that clear out double tap this no update is not safe updates only safe I guess if you picked the right fixture type so we can see we have two different forms going here now and this is one that's thrown me off a number of times because I wasn't expecting that to be the behavior um, so instead we have we have two options if we want that to be what gets applied to everything um, believe this is what we just did with it that sure doesn't look like it has a matrix applied to it, does it? Um, it says phase 0 to 360. Oh, because I grabbed the wrong instance. Um, we can grab that store a matrix universal and overwrite, and that'll solve our problem. Um, I think. Is that not? Oh, shoot. That might have been the wrong. Uh, oh, that was the original. Sorry. So if I call the Mac one beams, we go in, we increase our transition width. I can store a matrix universal, overwrite that. And then once again, we get our stupid selective showing up. So we double store. Uh, and now when I double click this, all of the fixtures are using that because we overwrote all of their existing global information with new universal slash global information. Um, I actually don't know what plan B was. That was that was the thing, really. Um, so just be mindful of that. Anytime you update, if you're only updating a single line, especially, or just but really anytime you update, it would be a good practice to just double check afterward that all your waveforms are the same, if they're supposed to be the same. You could intentionally keep multiple waveforms in that same line. Um, I wouldn't recommend it just because it gets harder to start separating out what's what's being updated where and, and how and all that. That's the whole point of doing the single line version. So if I go in here and I copy this instead, make copies of the actual source information 
and apply my groups to that, group three, group one, group four, and then delete the lines that were just referencing it. Now, if I'm wanting them to all do separate things, I can extract them all as separate presets and I can call the single line for my Mac one beams. I can give that one, let's say I want that one to have a, a shorter width for some reason, actually be more, uh, probably be more likely I would want that on the tornadoes just to get a little more negative space out of them. So I pull up the tornadoes, I go to that step, I shrink it. Um, at this point, since I'm only updating one fixture type, I could use update and that should work just fine. Um, when I double click this, we see our two waveforms. Um, but if I call just the tornadoes, we see the tornadoes are all doing the narrower version. The Mac one beams are all doing the wider version. The Lyra's are all doing the wider version. Um, so that's, that's the way that I've started preferring to, to break it up so that I know specifically there that each group is working with independent information. Um, it's a trade off. You may prefer to do multiple global types in one preset so that you can keep doing the manipulation by a single recipe line. So if I want to tweak the phase, if I want to tweak the blocking, whatever, I can't imagine I would want blocking there. But anyways, um, that allows you to, to, to keep doing all that from one line. Um, so, you know, feel it out, pick your poison there, but I when they're doing different things, I prefer to do separate presets. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll cap this video at that. So that that's our use of our manipulating universal information. Um, and then in the next video, we'll start going into uh, phasers that are referencing external presets that are that have integrated presets uh, baked into them.